Good morning, friends. Today is April 28th. We begin with a prayer written by parishioner Camelia Falcon. Dear God of space and time, as the crowds gathered to hear your word on the banks of the Galilee, we gather at our computers and homes to celebrate this Mass as a community. Please come to us as the Spirit to unite us through this Mass, to let us feel the call to communion with you, and to recognize the gift it is to gather in this way. Today's Mass is offered in memory of Robert C. Smith. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Well, today we are starting to move our way through the Acts of the Apostles. We are going to hear about the martyrdom of St. Stephen, first martyr of Christianity. And at the very end, we will hear our first reference to the man who eventually becomes the patron saint of our community, St. Paul, at this point called Saul. But our gospel today, for the rest of this week, we are working through the Bread of Life discourse in John chapter 6. And it will be a very strange time for us to be reflecting on the great gift of the Eucharist in this time when we cannot receive the Eucharist, most of us. So it will be a very different kind of week, I think, for us, and it usually is. Let us take a moment to celebrate even when we cannot be together, God is still present within us and among us, and he continues to shower us with mercy. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, you open wide the gates of the heavenly kingdom to those reborn of water and the Holy Spirit. Pour out on your servants an increase of the grace you have bestowed, that having been purged of all sins, we may lack nothing that in your kindness you have promised. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Stephen said to the people, the elders and the scribes, You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always oppose the Holy Spirit. You are just like your ancestors. Which of the prophets did your ancestors not persecute? They put to death those who foretold the coming of the righteous one, whose betrayers and murderers you now become. You received the law as transmitted by angels, but you did not observe it. When they heard this, they were infuriated, and they ground their teeth at him. But Stephen, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently to heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And Stephen said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out in a loud voice, covered their ears, and rushed upon him. They threw him out of the city and began to stone him. The witnesses 
laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. As they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell to his knees and cried in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this against them. And when he said this, he fell asleep. Now Saul was consenting to his execution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Be my rock of refuge, my stronghold to give me safety. You are my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, you will lead and guide me. Into your, your hands, hands, O Lord, Lord I, I commend, commend my spirit. spirit. Into your hands I commend my spirit. You will redeem me, O Lord, O God, O faithful God. My trust is in the Lord. I rejoice and be glad in your mercy. Into your, your hands, hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. my spirit. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your kindness. You hide them in the shelter of your presence from plotting from the plottings of men. Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. Brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The crowd said to Jesus, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you? What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to Jesus, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel, the good news of the Lord. First, a quick comment on our first reading from Acts. As we go through the book of the Acts of the Apostles, which is also written by St. Luke, we see more and more that the apostles and disciples are able to do things that only Jesus could do in the gospel. And Luke is very intentional in making these parallels. And so when Stephen dies, he says, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit which is very similar to what Jesus says on the cross in the Gospel of Luke as he dies. Lord, into your hands I commend my spirit. And Stephen says, Lord, do not hold this sin against them, as Jesus says, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. As Jesus did, we are empowered as followers of Jesus 
baptized into the death and life of Jesus, we are to do the same. And one of the ways that we do that is by continuing to receive the Eucharist, which is so strange to talk about at this time when we cannot receive the Eucharist. Usually, as a preacher, when we get to preaching about John chapter 6, I spend a lot of time trying to talk about this is not just a symbolic thing. We believe that Jesus is truly present, body and blood, soul and divinity in the Eucharist. But this year, (laughs) I think we're called to talk about something else. Because Eucharist is not just a sacrament. And I hate to use the word just, because Eucharist is the ultimate sacrament, the blessed sacrament. But Eucharist means thanksgiving. Eucharist is the whole mass. We are a Eucharistic people. We live our lives as Jesus did. In this time when we are pining for the Eucharist, just a few hours after our governor has issued some regulations for how to start opening up the economy, and we have not yet received directives from the bishop on what we are to do, stay tuned. I hope that we don't just think about this as running back to receive the Eucharist. My friend Michael Bayer, who is a youth minister in Chicago, a former Paulist novice, wrote a wonderful article a few days ago in America Magazine talking a lot about our current situation and looking to the early Christians. And he really challenges us to ask ourselves about the sadness we feel right now not being able to receive the Eucharist. Of course, it's a holy desire to want to receive Jesus' body, blood, soul, and divinity into us in this process of continuing to become more Christ-like. But Eucharist is also an act of communion, community, not just here in this local building, but with people around the world. So many of our brothers and sisters who are Catholic cannot receive the Eucharist on a regular basis. Just this past October, Pope Francis had a major synod talking about the fact that people in the Amazon probably only get to receive communion on average once a year because they live in remote villages and because there are not enough priests. And he was asking for ideas about how people could receive the Eucharist more, talking about the possibility of ordaining married men to the priesthood, talking about expanded roles for women, maybe as deacons. And yet, we as a world, a lot of people are opposed to that idea. That saying that changing those rules is is too dangerous or too risky or too avant-garde. And so our brothers and sisters, as a consequence, cannot have communion as frequently. Are our desires to receive communion again? My friend Mike sort of asks, Is that a completely separate idea from the fact that our brothers and sisters can't receive it? Is it just that we want to receive? Back in the time of Solomon and the following centuries, once the great temple was built to God, our ancestors had a tendency to put God in a box. God was at the temple. And so they didn't think that God was with them. I hope that this pandemic time is helping us not to make that same error, to commit that same sin. God is everywhere. God is present within us and among us. Let us remember that. Today, in our penitential rite, I chose this suggested trope in the big book, the Roman Missal, third typical edition. It said, Lord Jesus, you give yourself to heal us and bring us strength. Does Jesus only heal us through Eucharist? 
Does Jesus only bring us strength through the sacrament of Eucharist? Or do we believe that the power of Jesus is greater than that? Let us continue to grieve our loss of the Eucharist. But let us also grieve for those who have a deeper grief than us for what they cannot receive. We stand and offer our prayers for the church and its leaders, that we may have solidarity with all people throughout the world, not just those who look like us and have similar experiences, but those who are different, those who are in great and different need than we are. We pray to the Lord for an end to this pandemic, that we may all return one day cautiously to our former ways of life that are consonant with God's vision of the purpose of the universe. We pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick or suffering, for those who are homeless, imprisoned, refugees, addicted, abused, for those who live in violent parts of the world, for those who are victims of sexual trafficking, that we as a Eucharistic people may have communion with them and raise them up in solidarity as our fellow members of the body of Christ. We pray to the Lord. For all those on the front lines of fighting the coronavirus, for doctors and nurses, scientists and researchers, government officials, first responders, grocery workers, utility workers, that they may not flag in their faith, that they may have energy and endurance and the ability to care for themselves as well. We pray to the Lord. For all those suffering any kind of illness, be it mental, spiritual, or physical, that they may experience the presence of the risen Christ, we pray to the Lord. For the protection of all life, from conception until natural death, we pray to the Lord. And for St. Austin Parish, through the intercession of St. Clair of Assisi, that as we begin to upgrade our video systems, that we are able to better connect those who cannot be here with us who are. We pray to the Lord. And for those who have died, for Robert C. Smith, for whom this Mass is offered, that they may see the face of God, we pray to the Lord. O oh, loving God, in these extraordinary times, help us to recognize over and over and more deeply that we are connected intimately to one another through your Son and your Holy Spirit. Help our hunger for the Eucharist to bring us together and to help us to hunger for righteousness and justice for all people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread and the wine we offer you, fruit of the earth and fruit of the vine and work of human hands. They will become for us the bread of life and our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice, yours and mine, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, receive these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given the church cause for such great gladness, grant also the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But on this and in this time, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God. You love the human race and you always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. And we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the offering of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and love, together with Francis our Pope and Joe our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own, including those who seek you with a sincere heart. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, 
that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, St. Paul, St. Austin, St. Mary of Magdala, and St. Phoebe, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant the church peace and unity in accordance with your will. We ask this, Lord Jesus, for you live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, qui tollis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. On your stay, Qui tollis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Lord, look with kindness upon your people and grant that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Two announcements. First of all, this coming Sunday, May 3rd, we are having a very, very important virtual town hall meeting about the development of our property, the potential development of our property. There is a session at 11 o'clock and one at 2 o'clock. Go to our website to find out how to sign up, but please, please, please join us. Seating is limited to 180 computers per session. There will be a recording available if those both fill up, but we would like to take your questions if you can get into one of the live sessions. There's so much to update you on, and it's really exciting, and we really need your input. So thank you for that. Second of all, as mentioned, we are going to start upgrading our video recording, live streaming ability instead of using my cell phone and $22 worth of microphones. So do pray for us. This is way beyond any of our intellectual uh, fields of study here. Um, we've asked far and wide for help. We think we have it, but uh, it's going to be quite a learning process this week. So thank you again. If you want to ask for St. Clair of Assisi, patron saint of television, and uh, clearly the patron saint of live streaming mass to intercede for us, we'd appreciate it. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go and proclaim the love of God by loving and serving one another.